What's your dodged a bullet story? Me and my girlfriend at the time were traveling from New Zealand to my family back home in Sweden. We both decided to spend a bit more money to fly back through Paris instead of Amsterdam, just because we wanted to see the Eiffel Tower. It cost us maybe an extra $50 and we got to see it on the landing and then take off, but never actually set foot in Paris proper because we were poor students. When we landed in Auckland, New Zealand, jet lagged beyond belief, we turn on our phones and notice that we have about 50 missed calls from our travel agent, which was odd. When we call her, she sounds super relieved and out of breath. She tells us the flight she originally suggested to us, the one from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur, was shot down over Ukraine. My brain couldn't process that information at the time, but once I woke up the next day, it hit me like a ton of bricks. $50 made the difference between seeing the big steel thingy that has so many photos of it and being sent to Sweden in body bags piece by piece. Sometimes the absurdity of my existence comes over me. And this story always gives me goosebumps. One incredible story to tell over beers, though. When I was a naive young woman, I lived in St. Thomas, Virgin Islands. I worked in an area that could be very sketchy after dark. One night after work, I got really drunk. I stumbled into a taxi to head home. So drunk, I'm not even sure how I gave him my address. When we arrived, I started digging in my pocket for cash to pay the taxi driver, and he reached over and said, No, no, baby. I'm not a taxi. I just wanted to make sure you got home okay. Apparently, I had just jumped into a random car. I will be forever grateful to this stranger and much more careful in my after-work decisions. Had gallstones, and the doctor gave me a choice between surgery to remove the gallbladder or antibiotics. I chose the surgery, which is very unlike me. When they started the surgery, they found out the gallbladder had burst and the stones were in my body cavity. What was supposed to be a short procedure through the belly button turned into a 10-inch incision to remove the stones. I was supposed to leave the hospital that day, but it turned into a week. However, if I chose antibiotics and went home with a burst gallbladder, I probably would have died of sepsis. I stayed out of the house overnight while in high school. My dad was very angry and told me that I better be home that night. I didn't listen and instead stayed at a friend's house with my girlfriend. At around 2 a.m., a kid from high school drove a Denali into my house. It ran directly into my room and destroyed my room, bed, and anything else around. He was estimated to be going around 60 mob year ah. My dad is blind and thought that I may have been in the room. He was searching for me frantically, my mother said. I remember getting a ton of phone calls from home knowing that I was going to get into trouble for staying out against my parents' wishes. The next day, when my girlfriend dropped me off at home, I found a massive wood board and tarp covering my room. I would definitely not be here today if I had stayed home that night. Best case scenario, I'd be a paraplegic. I guess sometimes it does pay to not listen to your parents. When I was 10, I had a friend who had a boys and girls club adult mentor. My friend invited me to come meet him, and I was immediately creeped out. The way the dude smiled at me still gives me nightmares. Two days later, a local news story identified him as a child molester, and he had been molesting my friend for two years at that point. I will always trust my gut when it says, get out of here. I'd planned on doing some grocery shopping one afternoon after running other errands in the morning. By the time I got done with my morning errands, the weather looked quite gloomy, so I decided to leave the groceries for another day. Just as I got home, I got frantic texts from a friend of mine asking if I'm okay and to respond immediately. Apparently, around the time I decided last minute to forego shopping, someone opened fire at that exact grocery store I planned on going to. If I remember correctly, fortunately, nobody got hurt and the shooter got apprehended quite quickly partying in Mexico dance club Tijuana. I went to the bathroom. On the way, there was a group of people smoking pot. They offered, so I took a hit. I proceeded to go into the bathroom and pee. When I came out of the bathroom, the group of people smoking pot were being arrested by Federales, Mexico police. I just kept on walking. Mexico jail is the last place I would want to be. I was dating a girl for a while, and despite living and working on the opposite side of town, she'd always be near this one neighborhood coffee shop that I frequented, so I'd randomly run into her there and ask what brought her to that neck of the woods. She usually replied, grabbing some coffee, or I had a hunch you'd be here and wanted to say hi. One day she up and moves out of the state with zero warning and tells me that we aren't dating anymore. I was confused, but it was casual, so while it sucked, I just thought, oh, she probably had some family emergency or something and didn't want to tell me. A few weeks later on her Snapchat, I see that she's just making absolute stacks in San Diego and is always wearing the same uniform in these pictures. I was a bit confused but didn't think much of it. I started dating this other chick who frequented the aforementioned coffee shop, and after a month or two of dating, the first chick comes back and starts hanging out with her a bunch around the same neighborhood the coffee shop was in. A week later, both of them are moving to San Diego and want me to come with them, live with them, and work where they work. Something just felt extremely fishy, so I said no, and off they went.
Eventually, a picture got posted with both of them in it, in front of a very strange but very instantly familiar building, the HQ of the Church of Scientology. The reason the original chick was always in that neighborhood is that Kitty Corner from the coffee shop was the local chapter of the Church of Scientology. She got pretty ingrained in the church and moved to San Diego to work for them, then came back to recruit gullible people to come back with her. And that's the story of how I lost two girlfriends to the Church of Scientology and was none the wiser. Definitely glad I dodged that bullet. Making out with my girlfriend at the time. She was on top of me and leaned in and whispered that she wanted to have sex. I told her I didn't have any condoms and that we'd have to go get some, but she got frustrated and said that we could anyways, but eventually said never mind. Next day I'm at work and she pops in to apologize. I tell her it's not a big deal and that I'll see her after work only for her to say, no, no, I shouldn't have put pressure on you and acted like that. I need you to know to have hepatitis C, so we need to be careful. Big bullet dodged. We broke up a couple of weeks later after even more things from her past that she hid came out into the open. I was on my way to Taco Bell in the back of a friend's small truck. The cab was full, so I was in the bed. We passed by my apartment on the way, and I chose to have him drop me off. It was a bit chilly in the open air back there. By the time I got into my apartment, I had a Snapchat from the driver. It was a picture of his totaled truck. While he was stopped at an intersection, a drunk driver approached from the opposite direction going 100 plus. The driver clipped a bus causing an abrupt stop and his whole engine to rip out of his car, fly through the intersection, and into my friend's truck where I had been riding, unseat belted moments before. None of my friends were injured. I think both the people in the other car died. Edit. To the dozens of people saying that my friends were only involved in the accident because of the deviation to drop me off, you are not wrong, but it still feels like I dodged a bullet. Furthermore, the route from point A to point Taco Bell went directly past my apartment on a low-speed residential street. The time it took for me to hop out of the back as they drove by added maybe 30 seconds to their journey. In a small, rural college town at night, this may have made enough of a difference. But if we had been there earlier, maybe we would have been turning into the intersection, and I'd have been broadsided by the flying engine, instead of it hitting my friend's car head-on. Who knows? I'm just happy to be alive and excited to see what today holds. I left a store and it soon became obvious something was wrong with the car. I pulled into the Walmart parking lot I was by, and, yep, flat tire on the front left side. My rather pregnant wife and three-year-old daughter get out. It was hot. Got out the inadequate scissor jack that came with the car, and I was about to get started when my brother-in-law stopped to see if we needed anything. So I said maybe let them sit in your car while I change the tire. I loosened the lug nuts, jacked the car up, pulled the lug nuts off, and the tire is a little stuck. I lay down partially under the car to pull on the tire. The next thing I hear is my brother-in-law shouting, Look out! So I just roll away from the car, and the very next thing I hear is crunching metal. The inadequate jack had snapped in half, dropping the car all the way to the ground where my arm shoulder had been like one second earlier. No damage was done to me, but I had to walk the adrenaline rush off for a few minutes after that. Fortunately, we had AAA, so they sent a guy to come fix it. The tow truck driver said he'd seen those jacks snap a bunch of times. So if the only jack you have for your car is the inadequate screw-type jack, please buy a better one. Please. I do not expect to come that close to getting injured and not have anything happen twice in one lifetime. Edit. A lot of you have really good comments on safety, etc. I upvoted all of them. Part of the point I should have maybe made more clear is that with a pregnant wife and daughter with me, I was rushing to get things done. Rushing is always where I make mistakes and all that. In retrospect, I should have handled it differently. But anyway, I did dodge the bullet in this case. I've got an almost literal dodged a bullet. I was cutting a tree with a chainsaw. The saw wasn't mine, it was old. And I don't know how well maintained it was. The chain broke and came whipping back at me. I didn't even react, it was too fast. I didn't feel any pain. I turned and saw the chain was hanging, half stuck into a tree behind me at head slash neck level. The tree was directly behind me, in a straight line from the chainsaw. Somehow the chain whipped off curved around my head slash neck and buried itself in a tree three feet behind me. If it had gone straight, I would be dead or disfigured. I didn't even try and take the chain with me. I just called it a day, walked off, and didn't pick up another chainsaw for about six or seven years. Whew! Edit. I was also shot at while delivering pizza. I missed my turn in a rural area and used a gravel driveway to turn around. It was wooded on both sides, so I went down farther than I should. I finally turned around and saw a guy with a bolt-action rifle in a little field off to the side of the driveway. Saw him raise the rifle in my direction. Saw slash heard him shoot. 
never heard the bullet pass, and it didn't hit my car. So I think he was just trying to scare me. It worked. I peeled out, flinging gravel, and made it back to the road. Because of our positions, this person shot back towards the road, maybe 200 yards, and there were houses on the other side of the road. It was wooded, but that's not a shot I would have ever taken, beyond the obvious reasons. One night my freshman year of college, my then-boyfriend and a few friends had the idea to drive through the night to a lake upstate and smoke some weed while the sun came up. We were in a state where marijuana was very much illegal, still is deep south. I opted not to go with them because I had an 8 a.m. class in the morning. Cut to me freaking out the following afternoon when their car still wasn't back and I hadn't heard from them all day. They all got arrested for possession and spent the night in jail. Thankfully, they were bailed out, but they all had some long-term probation and reduced job opportunities afterward that affected them for a few years. Living in southern Vermont, I work for a small software company, wife teaching at a small local college. We decide to move to the southwest. Wife gets a job, we sell the house and move cross-country. Within a year, my company was sold and most employees let go. Wife's college closed. We would have been stuck with a hard-to-sell house and the only possible jobs at least an hour away. Happy where we are, timing is everything. Was helping two other people cut down a tree with a chainsaw after a storm that knocked out power. We had to get specific trees down before the electric company would come out to fix the lines. The tree snapped and gave way above the chainsaw cut and kissed my lip. If I was standing an inch further, it would have been extremely painful. Always had a crush on a girl I used to be friends with in high school. Around six to seven years after we graduated, I finally asked her out, and after a while we started dating. It was going great until I started seeing signs of her being manipulative. Then when it came to her venting to me about how she misses her daughter and doesn't have full custody, she would say different reasons almost every time. I didn't say anything about it or call her out, but then the gaslighting came. We would have simple disagreements and opinions on certain things, which is fine. But during the fights, she would tell me that I'm sensitive because I always tried to defuse the fight onto another topic because I knew I was wrong. Then after we both cooled off to talk about it, she would completely deny that she said anything and that I'm just imagining things. It started to make me feel crazy like what if she's right? Cut it off about a week after. Turns out she had been discharged from the military for psychological problems and also the reason she didn't have custody was coming back home from a night out, noticed my shoelace is undone, stopped to tie it. Ten feet in front, exactly at the place I would have been if I haven't stopped, a drunk guy from the first floor of an apartment building sits on his window, pulls out his body part and starts urinating on the pavement. Biggest few I had in a while. Got out of an abusive relationship and kicked him out right before quarantine and lockdown all started. I was stuck in a house, but I was free from a nightmare. Met a girl in high school and passing from a different small town than I was from. She was pretty and kind of wild. I was the opposite. Met back up in college and puberty kicked in a little to help my looks out a bit. She was about the same as before but grew up a bit. We dated for a while and a couple of times she casually brought up a guy she knew since they were kids and said she'd marry him someday. Fine by me. It was just casual dating. EFGF. But it was a little weird knowing there was zero chance for us. We couldn't keep our hands off one another. Twice she got mad when I wouldn't have sex without a condom. One night at the club we were drunk and dancing and she got all serious and told me she had had an abortion in high school, so long before we started dating. She didn't know the dad. Fast forward a couple of weeks and a friend in a fraternity tells me he saw her making out with one of his frat brothers. I asked her, and she said yes, she was drunk, but I picked her up that night because she was a mess. The next week was her sorority formal and I had a ball game. I was in athletics. So she went stag, dough, I guess and ended up being with the dude she made out with at her formal, and that dude came with her best friend, so that was over. I called it off with her, but we were still friends. We go our ways, she marries the dude she was in love with from high school. I met my wife, and both of us were married a week apart. The other day my wife tells me that my ex and her husband are getting a divorce. They've got several kids, and she had been unfaithful 12 times in just a few years. They're getting divorced now. I feel terrible for the kids and her soon-to-be ex-husband because he is an excellent dude. I really thought they'd make it. I was living in Utah and going to work at 5 in the morning. It was January and there was a fair amount of snow on the road. I was crawling down the icy hill that I lived on that has a traffic light at the bottom. I was about to go through the intersection since it was green for me when I noticed a snowplow that definitely wasn't going to stop at his red light. Luckily, I was paying attention and was able to stop before the light. I definitely would have been T-boned if I had kept going. I once went scuba diving with two friends to try a dry suit to dive in really cold water. As we entered the water, it felt really cold. I thought everything was normal. Back then, I had no reference for cold water, 
and the feeling in a dry suit. The suit had a leak and was filling with water. On 1.5 diary, after 15 minutes realized that the temperature wasn't normal. I signaled to my buddies that I need to get back. By that time, the suit was halfway filled with water. It took us quite some time to get back to the coast. When I left the water, I couldn't move my hands and started to feel dizzy. My friends had to undress me because I almost fell unconscious. If I would have stayed longer, I would have felt unconscious while still submerged. Never underestimate the dangers of cold water. That stuff gets you quick. Sorry for the bad English. I'm not used to commanding in English. I almost died when I went shooting with my dad. My dad and I had gone shooting plenty of times, but he is getting up there in age and weight, so he isn't the most coordinated or common sense filled person anymore. Anyways, we get to the local pit where everyone goes shooting and we start to set up. We just use the tailgate typically to hold everything, but while pulling all the gear out of the back seat, my dad pulls out his 270 right next to me. He was loading it, barrel pointed six inches away from my head. At this point, I had no idea what he was doing. I was grabbing more things out of the back seat. As he goes to chamber it, his finger is on the trigger and the gun goes off inches away from blowing my head off. It was a wake-up call for me. I have not taken him shooting since. Back in high school, my brother, a friend of his, and I attended a football game. It might have been the homecoming game. Memory is a little fuzzy. After the game, my brother and I were craving Taco Bell, and there was one a couple of blocks away from our campus. My brother's friend opposed the decision and told us that his dad was going to pick us up soon. We didn't feel like walking home, and we started thinking of how packed it might be at Taco Bell right after that game. Not long after we get dropped off at home, I turned on the TV to watch the Friday night football highlights on our local news station. The news instead is reporting on a shooting at the Taco Bell my brother and I wanted to go to after the game. It must have happened around the time we had gotten picked up. No one died, but a few kids got seriously injured. As far as I know, they never found out who was responsible. But I do think about how different it could have turned out had we gone. Stealing this story from a friend. He lives in another country where alcohol use is frowned upon heavily. But it isn't illegal. Having said that, there aren't many bars or clubs or places like that for younger people to hang out at and drink. But there are a few. Well, in my friend's neighborhood, there was this one bar that he and his friend group went to pretty much every Friday night without fail. For years, they'd go every Friday. One Friday, his then-girlfriend had a family event to go to, so they didn't go. Since they weren't going, the other friends decided not to go either. I think they went to someone's house to hang out instead. That night, there was a terrorist attack on the bar. Dozens of people were killed. My friend and his friends were extremely lucky. About five years ago, my family was having a marshmallow roast on an open fire. Huge fire. For some reason, I didn't eat anything off of the fire. The next day, I woke up and I could barely see. Walked into my bathroom without my glasses, still didn't see anything wrong. Walked into my parents' room, still dark. I got my mom to get up and come look at me. She seemed pretty surprised. I had a severe case of poison ivy from the fire. One thing I'll never forget is when my dad saw me while laying on his bed. He yelled, oh my gosh, and fell off the bed. Makes me laugh just thinking about it. But yeah, my entire body was covered. Missed a week of school. But if I would have eaten a marshmallow off of that fire, it would have gotten in my throat. That's why I have a phobia of marshmallows. I was at work, and sometime around 1 p.m. I started getting an urge to go home. I mean, I often want the day to end soon, but this day I just kept feeling an urge to go home ASAP. I never left early, mostly because I carpooled with two, three next-door neighbors, depending on the day. I talked to my boss, messaged my neighbors, and told them that I took an Uber home early. They got in a very bad car accident that afternoon. I got out of school and I was about to take the bus, but decided to walk home since it was a nice day. Turns out a couple of blocks later I saw the same bus surrounded by cop cars. Turns out someone pulled out a weapon and one of the passengers managed to restrain them. I had a choice between a bland grad school student and a very smooth-talking finance guy with expensive shiny things. I trusted my instinct. The finance guy is now in prison for having intimate relations with his intoxicated female client, filming it and using it to blackmail her. ETA. Someone pointed out my use of the word bland, and I'm realizing that I should not have used bland and plain interchangeably. They are very different. He calls himself bland and takes pride in it. Obviously, I do not think of him as either once we got to know each other, and most definitely not when I married him. He's the most interesting person I know. I got out of football practice late one day. I was supposed to go to a church thing that night. About halfway through the church thing, a man walked in and started shooting. Killed eight people, then himself. Wife and I stood for most of the day where the Italian Air Force jet crashed into the crowd at Ramstein AB, Germany in 1988. Only moved because smoke was swirling from two different grills, making us cough. 
and also because I had controlled Italian pilots in the Rapcon and did not trust them at all. The plane hit the crowd less than 15 minutes after we moved. When I was 8 years old, I used to play in the creek behind my house. The neighborhood behind our house and on the other side of the creek was sketchy, out there just digging for clay one hot day in the summer. When a copperhead snake struck my neck, I was leaning down in the water. I fainted because I hate snakes, so it spooked me. I was in the water face down when a person struggling with addiction from the bad hood seen it. He came to my rescue and saved me from drowning. Took me into the yard and up to my porch where my mom dialed 911. The ambulance got there and I woke up. They had no idea I got hit on my neck until I told them. They pulled over and had a helicopter come airlift me to another hospital for the bite because they had no anti-venom. Death came for me twice that day. Subscribe and like if my content is interesting to you. I post new video every day.